In this rainy episode, we use raw steel, wood, and concrete to transform this urban game corridor into a fence, gate, and backyard garden protection. So we're gonna use this fence partly to create some security so you won't fall off this wall and drop down into the area where the doorway is here. So we're gonna put it right up against this, this wall, which means we're gonna attach it here against the concrete. We're gonna have a post or two that's lagged into the concrete, um, the, the landscaping wall here. Then we'll have the gate at the path and that's gonna get buried with posts. And then we'll have one more buried post. And then we've got a tree that we're gonna run into over on the far side there. So we're gonna to have to kind of weave the gate around the, the tree because we wanna maintain that limb for privacy between the two houses. So there'll be some challenges with this fence. It's not a very long fence, it's about 20 feet long, but each of the posts is gonna bring its own challenge. So we'll get to the designing and start to lay out the fence based on the design we have on the other side of the house. So this is our little test fence. We had deer coming through this way, um, first through the yard, and now we're gonna block the other side. But what we did is we um, used two inch square tubing as the, as the posts got a little angle iron across the top and it's got hooks in it that hold this, this um, mesh screening in place. And so that's galvanized, it won't rust. The rest of it's meant to patina and sort of rust, but hold, hold up. And then we've got cedar boards that are lagged in on the other side. This is what you'd call the backside, but we tried to make it look nice from both sides. This is the backside that um, has pressure treated boards that hold things together. And then cedar boards that started out kind of tan and they'll gray out like cedar does. We'll use this as our design and we'll build the specifics that we need for that side over there with the gate and lagging into the wall. And then there'll be a much bigger piece in the back of the yard that will attack next where we have a rolling gate for the car to come in and out and stuff. Anyway, this is the design. We'll go lay this up in the CAD system and, and get started working on it. I said, baby, I'm done. I'm so sick and tired of the way you just run. Say it takes two when you build that trust. I feel alone in the snow pile up. I said, shawty, I'm done. Driving down this one way road, even with you I'm alone. Trying to find my way back. When I move ahead, you stay back. Baby, I know we get lost. But love is always worth the cost. And I always play my part. But now I to cut that cord. So, baby, I'm done. I'm so sick and tired of the way you just run. Say it takes two when you build that trust. I feel alone in the so called love. When this one way. Okay, we got all our metal. The metal actually takes up a ton of space in here and it's hard to move around. So I'm gonna go ahead and first cut it down to the lengths that I know I need for the posts and stuff. I've got my plan sheet here so I can pull off the, the pieces, get that all stacked aside, and then I'll be able to move around the shop a little bit easier. This metal comes really um, greasy. It comes in oiled up and not all the pieces, but I'll, I'll wipe them off as I go. So I've got kind of cleaner stuff to work with. And then I'll really wanna clean that up before I go ahead and weld. Okay, so I got all the metal cut out. I got the pieces kind of roughed out, um, cleaned up the shop a little bit. And then I realized I had, last time I put the torch away, I had kind of put away everything wet. So I, I went ahead and got a new electrode, cleaned it up, um, new cup. I got new grinder wheel. Um, the la one of the people in one of my last videos commented that my, when I grind welds, I'm a grinder, not a welder. And so I appreciate that. I'm gonna take the challenge, try to make better welds and not have to grind as much. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna weld up the, first I'm gonna weld the door, um, the, just the doorway opening for the gate, and then, um, and then the gate itself, the, the swinging por portion. I'll use both of those, and I'm gonna, th those have to get cemented in the ground, so I'm gonna work on that first, get that put in the ground, and then it can sit for a couple days while I get the other parts prepared, and then every, everything else will sort of, the measurements will come off of that and, and go out to the walls on both sides. So I'll go ahead and start welding these and put together the first rectangular pieces without hinges and then I'll back in the hinges after that. I 
the this will be the the opening gate so I got that put together welds went really well and now I'll do the outer frame that goes around it I'm going to put a I'm going to put a little strut across the bottom that's going to get buried in the dirt underneath but it'll just make putting it in and posting it in the concrete posts a lot easier so I'll add hinges to this so that it can swing in and out but this is square and true and it'll work well for the it'll hold the mesh inside here All right, got the second part welded up. This is the doorway and it's got this stay across the bottom that'll just keep it rigid and square when I'm putting it in the ground. It'll be buried up to about here, so it's gonna be lower. And then this door inside will swing inside of it. So the next step is to start putting together the hinges that will hinge the, the gate inside the, this frame. And then I'll, t I'll weld on tabs as well for the fence that goes in either direction. Um, so that when this gets put in place, it's all ready to go and everything's ready to bolt into it. So I'll switch over to CAD and then to the computer to get things set up for running the CNC to cut out the hinge pieces. Here's these pieces. So there's a top and a bottom, and they they go together and form the the hinge, and they, they pivot on that hole. And I've got these bronze pieces that they're tight friction fit, so they they press in up and down. And you can see them inside there. That acts in a nice bearing surface that won't rust. And then I've got this shoulder bolt that will that slides down in there and holds it together with a lock nut on the back. All the stainless steel. So the hinges on the opening and closing side of the gate are ready to go. I'll weld those onto both the frame and the door when the time comes. And then I started working on the mechanism for the latch on the other side. I'm gonna have two latches, one high and one low. Sometimes when you have a gate that swings in and latches, it's like the top swings in and it kind of, it, it racks or it looks kind of funny. So I'm gonna have it latch on both top and bottom with a linkage between them. 
And I started by just trying to cut out a little keying latch out of stainless. And I've just been in a dead fight with it. I, I ruined a drill bit on one side, flipped the piece around and tried to do it. It's bending the bar a little bit with the mill because it's not cutting well. Stainless is tough to machine, but I'm just having a fight. And then I got into it and uh, got pretty close on this end, but then lost a bit there. So I put everything down. I kind of went back and looked at the code, adjusted some things. I'm going to build a little bit of a brace so that it won't flex. And hopefully that helps keeping it from deflecting. And then I'll go ahead and try to machine this again. I only need two of these little pieces and then the rest is um, hot rolled steel, which is easier to machine. So I got the, the frame and the door sort of laid up in here. I've got some half inch spacers and clamps to kind of hold this all together. So it's situated how we want it. Uh, I've got all of our little um, hinge pieces put together. There's some tabs that are machined out that will tack on or weld on that will hold the wood. And then there's some angle iron with holes that have been cut in them. Those angles will hold the the cross pieces, the, the, the horizontals that are angles, um, both top, middle, and bottom on the fence when I put it together. I uh, came up with a latch, and the latch is sort of like, it's, a, it's gonna captivate a 3 8 inch bolt, two 3 8 inch bolts that will fall into a little like a guillotine with a catch on it, and um, those will be linked together with a linkage that has two little clevises that will hold it together and a stainless steel Pipe that will hold so we'll put all that together, we'll cement that in, get it really registered and, organ and straight out there, and then the rest of the fence can go in from side to side, um, kind of building out from the, from the gate on both sides. The, the, the fence actually changes altitude at the fence too, so well, there'll be straight runs from, from either side once we get that all cemented in. So I've got these 
the latch sort of t um, tacked on. I'll kind of try to explain what I've got. So I've got this little clevis in this, this piece I machined and it slides in this, in this little gate. And then on the other side, I've got a similar one down here and I can, I can adjust the, the length of this thing with these, this threaded rod that goes to up and down. So anyway, that, that will slide up and down. And when uh, the door closes, it'll latch. And then I can try to get this piece on the other side, see if I got it fitting right. So this, this is working pretty well. It's sliding down, it goes in and out now with a little bit of grinding, but I've got a little bit of extra, I need to grind off the bottom just a tiny bit because it's not quite closing the gap there. That's gonna eventually um, captivate a bolt when it comes in. It's like it's pretty tight there. So I wanna open that up just a little bit. So I'm about to go and bury this stuff in the ground with some concrete and I'm kind of making a decision here. If you, if you look carefully at this um, latch, the pin um, is coming in just a little bit low and that's actually just some, for some, from some droop in the whole frame. And I, what I'm finding is that if I just, if I just, I can just push on the frame and get it to twist a little bit. So I think the frame is slightly racking um, and I'm gonna put it in concrete. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it in concrete and I'll use a ratchet strap and pull the frame so that that is aligned properly. It was, it was aligned properly and was sitting flat on the workbench and I'll get it aligned properly and let the concrete hold it in that position once the ratchet strap, ratchet strap comes off. The other, the other approach would be to, to cut off these supports and adjust, you know, cut them off and re-weld on new ones and adjust it up a little bit higher, but I think it, it's gonna rack anyway. The, the, the system's gonna rack a little bit until I get it concreted. And so I'll go ahead and put it in. Things, it, it, seems, it seems that the latch, latch works well, um, and I may need to do a little bit of shaving on the, the little tongue in the, in the latch itself to get it to, to work more smoothly, but I can kind of make those adjustments once it's set in stone, literally, and uh, ready to go. So the next step is to wander out and start digging a hole. I got actually a pretty nice day out here for doing some digging. It's nice to be outside the shop. Um, there are two stakes here that are kind of marking where I'm gonna dig my posts and the um, fence is gonna go in, What the doorway is gonna go in about here. Um, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, partly because the front door, I'll show you, but the front door actually, our handle fell off the front door and we were still waiting to get parts on that to repair it. So we've been walking through here to get to our back door. And we won't be able to do that if I've got holes here. So I'm gonna have to kind of dig this and then plank it. Um, hopefully and get it put back together quickly so we can walk through here. So now time for some digging and a little bit of time lapse. All right, well, the digging usually goes this way. The first hole was super easy to get put in and then the second one found a piece of concrete I had to hammer through and then a rock underneath that I had to break up with a sledge. Um, but I used a sledge and a, and a form stake and was able to break that up. So now I'll, I'll bring the frame out and set it in. I don't know if I'm even close, but got a little, a little space for the crossbar there and uh, I'll see if I'm getting close and then I can adjust the holes to get it to fit. All right, that wasn't too bad. I measured from the top of the frame here to the where it should be level with this concrete and I'm just about half an inch high in this hole so I can clean that up. That hole needs to go down a couple inches and then my spacing on this side is almost exactly right so the stake was pretty good. So I'll go ahead and dig a little bit more and try to adjust that and then I'll pull a string across here and make sure I've got it straight. Okay I'm getting pretty close now. I got the I got a, a brace in here to hold it straight. I've got it it's registered across the string line got my distance could, could go over about a quarter of an inch but it's pretty close and then I need to get it a little bit level but it's getting pretty close to being able to open and put the door back in it and make sure that or the gate back in it and make sure I can get that racked properly all right I got the got the strap in there and I did it 100% wrong so it's uh, I got to switch it the other direction but it is pulling it it is um, fixing the racking so it's the right way to go I just got it Get this, get the mass straight. Looks pretty good. I'll probably go a little bit extra just to make sure that it doesn't droop back.
right, well, it's been 24 hours since I last um, poured the concrete and it's curing still. Um, supposed to get rain again today and looking at the forecast, like rain every day for 10 days. So I'm just gonna, when I have time and opportunity, I'll get out here and work. I'm gonna put in the, the ed metal edge banding around the path and kind of build the path through the doorway now um, while I've got good weather and then I can shift inside and start building up fence pieces if it starts to get rain. Alright, the path looks pretty good. I got it sort of tucked in with the metal edges. The problem is this dirt is really, really sticky, so it's kind of like clay, and since this is where we're normally walking um, to get into the house, I'm going to run over to the um, landscaping place and get some gravel and get some quarter, quarter finds in here just so that we can walk on it without treading into the house. Once in a while, I get lucky with timing. That was uh, just a huge rainstorm that just came through in the time it took me to go and get a load of, of Porta Minus and um, get back here. But now it's pretty decent. The sun's almost going to come out. So get to putting this in the path. Yesterday I got the path got a tree being cut down next door. Yesterday I got the path put back together. The concrete's still curing for the frame that goes around the gate. And so I'll let that keep curing. I'm gonna work on the pieces that go here. So I'm gonna have one one fence post that's gonna be lagged into this wall. Two, they're gonna lag in on this this uh, this footing wall, and then I'll start building the panels across. So these next three, the first thing I'm going to do, if they're cut out to, to the length, they're going to be about six feet tall, six foot four. And then I've got little squares. I'm just going to put little caps on them and weld those on, just weld up the top so that water doesn't pour down in there when it rains.
All right, with these caps in place, the next step is to put the tabs that hold the wood on. And for, a, for an interior post, a post that's kind of in the middle of a span of several panels, um, the, the wood's gonna attach, you know, it's gonna sit in like this. And so I'm gonna weld a, a tab on that goes both sides. Uh, as long as there's no change in elevation of the fence, it's just gonna pick up on both sides. So I'll just center this and put them in. So these two that are going to be stand on, stood on top of the wall need to lag in. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to put this piece of C channel. Um, I'm going to weld it on to the uh, end here. I'll, first, I'll drill some holes in it so that I can put the lags into the concrete wall, and then I'll um, weld this this sort of leg onto the bottom of it. All right, so this Lawrence description, um, there's sort of an interesting thing going on here that it always surprises me how much big pieces of metal will move when you weld them. So if you think about this, this tube that I've got here, it's 120 walls, so it's almost an eighth of an inch thick walls. It's pretty stout. But I welded here, here, and here on the same side of the tube, and it made the tube, there's no way I could show you, but if you were to look down the tube on end, you'd see that it, it's got a bend to it now. So if I put this, this uh, end piece that's going to lag into the wall. If I put that on flat, it's going to make the whole thing bow out of the wall because the most of the curve is in this lower part of the thing. So I've got this kind of Rube Goldberg setup here where I've got the parallel part of the tube, the tube that's not bent, which is the top part. I've got it squared up here with some clamps, kind of splitting the difference. And basically I'm kind of, I'm torquing or offsetting this, this, this lag to piece I'm putting out at an angle to kind of make that, that bend. I'm not gonna get rid of the bend, but I'm gonna compensate for it so that the post is generally straight up. It's a fence, so it doesn't have to be dead straight, but it'd be nice to keep it as close to vertical as possible. All right, there's one other um, set of tabs I need to put on. So this is like the post that's gonna go up against the, um, the wall. And so there's the, the three tabs that are gonna hold the wood for the panels on. And then I've got these little pieces of angle with a hole in them that I need to tack on that will hold the steel. There's gonna be a piece of steel that goes across the top, across the middle, and those two captivate the sort of um, hog fencing. And then there's one that kind of is just a trim piece across the bottom, and those three thing, those three need a little br a brace put on here. All right, so I've got the tabs for the wood on here. I've got the little tabs with holes in them for the metal. And um, I've got some, a block. This is gonna stand up off the, off the deck here a little bit. So I've got a block to space that. What I'm going to do is I've, I've got one of the, the, I've got the piece that goes across the top. I'll go ahead and just drop a bolt in there on both sides just so that that's registered. Kind of got to do a little bit of a balancing act to get this thing marked off and then get holes drilled in here so I can lag this thing in.
right, so I got the two posts up and I gotta just put the third one up. This is the one that goes up against the wall. So I cut holes in it and I'm gonna drill through into the wall um, and then bolt it in from there. I'm just gonna mark and then, uh, and then drill and bolt it in. another storm coming in so I'm gonna stop working outside now but you can see the path is all put together that looks pretty good got the rudiments of the um, fence coming in got a couple more pieces to put in and then we'll start putting the panels inside those one of the good things about doing a project like this is that because it's repetitive I'm building the same post over and over again with variations um, I can sort of refine things and learn a little bit about some techniques so I think I told you in one of the earlier ones that when I weld these three plates on here because I'm welding those all on one side of the tube it tends to bend the tube a little bit it starts to warp the tube so I'm going to try a strong back on here I've got a big piece of three inch pipe back here that is much stouter than the tube I'm welding I'm going to weld these one at a time just the way I did before and see if this tube lets it holds it in place while it cools so that it doesn't um, bow the tube as much it wasn't terrible and in this case I can get away with it but I kind of want to learn how to back out some of those issues um, for future things when it is more critical that I get dimensions exactly right. All right, I'll take this apart and see how my experiment of clamping on a strong back worked. There's actually two things I did. I tried to go with a little bit smaller filler rod and do a little bit lighter welds, just to put a little bit less heat into it, which probably helps quite a bit. And then I um, tried the strong back as well. And so my informal result will be to look down the tube and look how bent it is. it's actually pretty darn straight. I think that helped a, a whole bunch. Uh, for fun, I mean, it's still just a little bit bent, but for fun, next time I do one of these, um, which will be shortly here, I may actually put a little shim underneath and preload the tube the other way and see if I can't bend it down a little bit, heat it, and see if that will, you know, sort of almost re release it and then keep it straight. So this post is pretty standard. Um, it's got a welded on cap on the top, and then I've got the two tabs to hold the laterals that go back and the horizontals that go back and forth, um, intermediate tabs that hold it. And then I've got the wood tabs, that are the three of those that hold the, um, the wood panels on on the sides and the lower part. And then this particular one is deeper because it's gonna get buried in the concrete, uh, but each post has a different way it attaches to the, to the ground. So. This is a standard post. I'm going to go dig a hole and start getting this one set up and lined up and pour concrete for it. Okay, so digging it out wasn't too bad. I was able to get the um, post put in. I had to go through a couple of routes, but not, nothing too crazy. Um, I've got it sort of positioned. I've got a string line across here to kind of make sure that everything's planar and then it's level and sort of rectified. So I could pour the concrete, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the gate in and make sure that, I don't know if you remember, this thing needs to probably rack a little bit to get the things to line up real well. 
and I can use the final leg of the top rail over on against the wall to actually pin or move that and then lock it in place. I want to do that before I pour the concrete so that I'm not kind of messing with that while I've got the concrete um, curing and perhaps messing up the concrete. So I'll get this thing stabilized, get this door racking and completely adjusted. Then I'll go ahead and put the concrete in just after that. All right, so a surprisingly small amount of push from that side squared this thing up and actually got me to a little slightly overcorrect, but I think that gate's gonna droop a little bit. So that's in good shape and I can adjust that by just moving those holes a little bit on that, that last piece against the wall. So now this post is all braced. It's uh, string lined and it's planar, plumb and everything. So I'll go ahead and put the concrete in and then I can let this sit tight. Um, we're supposed to get rain again in the next few days, but at least for now, get it started curing and then I can work on the infill panels and get the other stuff done. The concrete's poured and um, now I want to go ahead and get ready to put the wood in and so there's there's these pressure treated pieces of wood that I cut um, I'll cut them down and then I put in a little groove that fits those tabs that are welded on round over the ends and then um, round over the whole the whole side and then treat the ends that just helps the ends um, from rotting out as quickly because I set up stick directly into the sun and, and weather so I'll go ahead, there's five bays in the fence that we're putting in, so I'll make 10 of these because one, one goes on each side and then the cedar um, screws into these. So I'll go ahead, you'll see I've got jigs for these and they go together pretty quickly and I'll knock these out.
nine out of ten right. Um, these are all done except the last one here on the end is exactly thirty four and a half inches, not thirty three and a half inches. So I got to cut it down and uh, re retool the edges. But I'll go ahead and cut the pockets while I've got the router set up for that. I'm going to wrap up for today, but the last thing I'll do before I fin before I clean up is just I'll hit all these with uh, all the exposed parts that I just opened up with a preservative. Um, it'll just help, especially the end grain here. Um, it'll help these weather better over time because um, they're going to be exposed to a lot of weather. Well, we're back to rain today. I uh, got the hog fencing, so this is this is four inch um, hog hog fencing or cattle fencing. I'll cut that down to fit in the upper portion here. And then I'll use these pieces made yesterday to, uh, I'll, I'll screw them in on the fence here and then um, face the back side of that with cedar. And I, because there's gonna be a whole lot of these as we work around the yard, I don't really have a pattern for how to do this. So I'm gonna do this first day, completely kind of learn the process and see if there's a way to kind of knock them all out in a, in a more orderly fashion.
So the first panel went pretty well. Didn't really learn anything that I can do in mass to make it a lot faster. I probably will like put all the bol bolsters in with the wood in one pass just because I got the drill bit set up and everything. I started working on the second one here and I did learn one thing. It's kind of interesting that the hog grating has, it's on four inch centers and this one's real accurate. This one's actually off. It's off by about half an inch and that means that it doesn't, it's not captivated as well by those hooks and I kind of thought about it over lunch. And I think I'll just switch that panel out and use it elsewhere where I can shorten up the hooks a little bit and make it work. And I'll cut a panel out of some of the new material that'll fit this one and I'll keep plowing away at moving through these. Well, today looks like a day to work inside. There's, um, there's a, a pond, I need to work on that and fix that in the gate. I, I did, I made some good progress yesterday, but it stopped when I ran out of daylight and uh, I can work on the gate. I was glad, I'm glad I cut the hog fencing for the gate door actually, and I can work on that inside today. First step is though, I gotta un unplug the floor drain because we got a, a pond out here. Um, super rainy day today. Okay, after a little bit of civil engineering, I was able to get the drain draining, which is good. And then I got the shop set up. I got to work with a sailboat in the way today because of the weather. And I broke the stool that I used for welding as I was setting up. So I got it clamped up and it's glued. It just, it just split one of its joints. So I got that clamped up. Okay, I got the shop organized and able to work now. So I've got this, I've got the hog fencing that I cut out yesterday and cleaned up the edges to go in this this door and I don't want to I don't want to put it under a ton of stress and bend the door in but I want it to be snug in there so I've got these little hook pieces that I was using yesterday to put the hog fencing on and they can I, I'll show you I can machine the end of it and then cut it to length to match and so I've got this I'll get this thing centered in here and measure it out and then custom cut these and then I'll just actually hook them in and weld it in place because this once this panel's in, it's not going to come out. The other one's kind of bolt in when I'm erecting the fence, but in this case, I'm just going to weld it in in place. So there'll be two on the ends here, two up on top, and then two more on the side, so there'll be six total. And I'll kind of custom cut them to fit. It looks like it centers in here just about right. I'll go ahead, I'll show you what these look like. So they're, they are just a machined hook, basically, and that just gets welded in on the end. So I had got the top two pieces put in um, on the door, and then I've got I've, I've got the the mesh just hanging in those, and then I've got the bottom pieces I had to cut them. I had to make a little bit of an adjustment, and these are going to be a little bit of a finesse to get these just tacked and started. All right, so I got this, this is welded in now and I, I can cut to measure, uh, or measure to cut, and then uh, tack in little side, side things to stabilize this and make sure it, it's flat. So I'll walk, I'll walk around and put in four of these. I think I said there were gonna be six total. There's actually eight total. Okay, so we've gone from 60 degree sunny weather to super rainy yesterday to about 30 degrees today and cold, but um, decent weather to work. And this is gonna be the most challenging part. There's a, I gotta get a fence, the fence, I gotta get one more post in here. And I've got a wall that's not, it's not, it's not vertical. It's, it's skewed in every direction. So I think I'm gonna build a little, a little L that sits in, lags into this side of this this wall which is not straight 
and then has a little dog leg over and then I'll put a post on top of that and tack it in lightly and bend it to get it straight and everything and then and true it up and then and then clean it up. Okay, so I got a this little L piece that I welded up and I've got a, a miter gate, a miter on the end of it here and I've got it just bolted in loosely, uh, well, firmly, but with just one bolt. And as promised, it's completely off kilter. I've got this board registered as being completely vertical, so I can use that kind of as a reference. And I've got my post here. It'd be nice to weld it out here, but I think I'm gonna just bring it back in the shop and weld it. And uh, I just need to get gauge how far off of, uh, of a clean joint it is. And it looks like if I can just reproduce that gap, I'll just tack it, bring it back out and place it and make sure that it's lining up well and then bring it back in and weld it. Okay, so I got that tacked and um, actually got pretty close. So I will try to sort of remember where this is and probably pop one more weld in there, see if I'm getting close and then I can come and bolt it up. Then I'll, I'll completely finish it up. Okay, so I brought that back in and welded up the Franken post, which is all twisted and funny, but it will end up with a result of a straight post coming up off the top once it's lagged in. And I'll go ahead and add the cap on this and the tabs for holding the wood and the cross pieces, and then I can start weaving my way around that tree. Okay, so yesterday I got super close to getting finished. I've got just one more panel to go here and a couple little strong backs to add in. We've got everything weaved around the tree, which was a little bit of a challenge. Had to kind of cut both the upper panel with the hog fencing and the wood to conform to where that tree goes through, but it provides good protection between the two houses here and shade here in the summer. So we'll leave that tree there and got it weaved around there. If that tree ever comes down or changes out, we can fix that one panel pretty easily by just bolting in a new section there. Um, so we'll get this wrapped up and uh, close up this project. through the final fence. So the fence, every panel's pretty much the same plan with, with wood on the bottom and then the hog fencing up on top. Each of these posts was slightly different. The first post was um, tied in, lagged into the wall. Then I had two that were lagged into the concrete um, foundation sort of um, stem wall here. Then we have a gate and the gate was concreted in and actually did two things. It acts kind of like a single post, if you think about it, because it's got tabs on one side and tabs on the other side. And then it has the obviously the gate in the middle. It also acted as a transition from one elevation to another elevation. Then we concreted in a post. We had to weave around the tree. So we had to kind of build a funny little bracket there to fit around the tree. And then lastly, we had the Franken post on the end that had to tie into that, that back wall. The, uh, the latch is sort of like a normal latch that you'd see on a fence, but it's got this little linkage that goes between an upper and a lower version of the same thing. So you open that up and then the gate, um, with that up, the, the gate opens up and swings out. <clears throat> the hinges we built, the hinges we built so that when you're, when the gate's all the way open, it tucks out of the way so that like if you're carrying a wheelbarrow through or something you won't hit your hand on the um on the hinges and then on the uphill side this is sort of like the exterior side if you will and you can see the tree poking through that little spot there the boards in front 
and then we tidied, tidied up the path here on the way up, up and out. Makes for a big change from the original thing. So the whole goal here is to avoid having deer use this side entrance as a corridor to uh, come and go through the backyard. So hopefully we diminish the deer traffic a little bit. Plus we have a little bit of security. All right, that wraps up this project. That was kind of fun working with some wood, some metal and some concrete and digging in the dirt a little bit. It's an organic shape to get across all this way and trying to build something straight and flat. It was um, challenging, but a lot of fun. And this will be the same format of fence we're gonna build around the back side of the house where we'll have a big rolling gate for the Jeep to get in and out. And that'll be a lot more work to get that, that rolling gate um, mechanism working well. Want to make that something that we could automate down the road. But for now, this side's all tucked in. Thanks again for watching, for sticking through the video. And um, please like, subscribe, and share this with other people that might be interested in building projects. Until we see you next, we'll be out building.